Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the channel and um, today we're going to be tackling a few solve for x problems so let's jump straight into it. Right. <clears throat> uh, so this was taken from the 2016 uh, math paper 1. So right, first question, x into x minus 7 equals 0. So the first thing that I normally look at is mark allocation. So straight off, yo, know, two marks easy to mark so um, if you want to go ahead and try to do it uh, can do this for each question that we're going to do we're going to be tackling um, about four questions so I don't want to waste too long on each question so if you want to try it and uh, see what you get for this question go ahead pause the video have a go and let's see if you get it right uh, right uh, if I think that should have been enough time so all right let's see we're gonna we have x into x minus 7 right so if you're thinking of multiplying this in, you are going down the wrong track, right? So what you should be doing, you should be seeing that uh, you have x multiplied by another number, in this case, x minus 7. And if you think about it, you know that if our answer is 0, which it is, and if we multiply two numbers, then one of them has to be 0, right? That, that makes sense. One of them has to be 0, because 0 times something is always 0. So what we're going to do, we're going to have our case 1, which is just this x. If this x is 0, then we're going to have x equals to 0, right? And then in our second case, we can consider this case 2 or, or we're going to have uh, our second number, which is x minus 7, and then this must equal to 0. And in this, and you see in our first case, there's nothing further we can do, so we just know x is 0. And our second case, what we're going to do, we're going to add 7 on both sides or take the 7 over. So we're going to be left with x is equal to 7. Right, so easy two marks. Bam. Congratulations. You got two for this question. <laughs> uh, next question. Um, this one is three marks. So still not too hectic, but much more, e much more works required for this one. So we have x squared minus 6x plus 2 is equal to 0. And we, we have this little hint over here, which is correct to two decimal places, right? So this hint over here uh, is basically saying in this form right now, we can't really factorize this, which if you look at it, you see we have 2 over here. Uh, the products of 2 is just 1 and 2. Like if you multiply them together, it's going to give you 2. Uh, you can't add or subtract those two numbers to give us minus 6, right? Um, you can try completing the square, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, that's going to be a bit more steps for three marks. So what I suggest is just um, jumping straight into the, the formula that you should know. It should be on your formula sheet if you have a formula sheet. Um, but uh, it's quadratic formula. I think it's half x formula. Yeah. Anyway, the formula, <laughs> which uh, you probably have memorized, but I know that teachers can be brutal at some time. It's just minus b plus minus uh, b squared minus 4ac. Right? That's all square root all over 2a. Right? Uh, and we know that our a value in this case is 1, just from looking at it. Uh, b is minus 6, c is 2. So what we're going to do, we're going to drop all of those into our equation. So we're going to have uh, minus minus 6 is going to give us uh, positive 6. So we can just write that as 6 plus minus the square root um, b squared. So it's going to become minus 6 times minus 6, which is going to give us 36. Uh, minus 4. A, remember, is 1. C is 2. Let's see. Can't even write a 2. Uh, 2. Uh, you get to write that square over there, square root, all over 2a, which in this case is 1. So you see this is all numbers over here, so we're just going to pop that in our calculator. And when we do pop this in our calculator, and the calculator is going to be 3 plus square root of 7, uh, which is your answer. But you see in the question, they say correct to two decimal places, right? So you have to press S to D on the calculator, which is third to decimal, which we're going to get our answer. And remember, two decimal places. 
so we're gonna get 5.65 right so and this is for our positive right I'm just gonna label it here to show you yeah I don't think you should do that in the exam but that's just for me to show you that that's the when the sign is positive and then in our second case we have it as x let's call that x negative uh, if we replace our positive with a negative we are going to get 3 minus square root 7 and if we press S to D we're going to get 0 0.35 right and that should do it if you want to check your answer I'll pop these back into there um, don't, don't type in 5.35 Six five because remember this is a round of value and what you want to do you want to tap in the full the full answer and then that will give you zero. If you do not get zero, uh, you probably just substituted wrong or maybe you just forgot the square or minus or something. So just uh, try it again. Right, oh, moving on. Um, this is the probably the longest one we're going to be doing today. Uh, this is square root of x minus one plus one equals to x. So this is five marks. Uh, that's that's quite a bit of marks. So if you can see something like this, don't panic. It's it's not that hard. It just it requires a few steps to do. So once again, as I say, pause the video, have a go um, to get it right. Great stuff. If you get it wrong, it's fine. You are practicing, and yeah, next time you get it right in the exam, you will get it right. Right. So. Right, welcome back, I guess, if you pause, if you didn't pause, that's kind of weird, <laughs> but it's fine. So, we have this area, so what we're going to do, um, we want to get rid of the square root, right, because we don't, we don't want to work with square roots. So, to get rid of the square root, we're going to square both sides. But, we can't just square both sides, because if you're going to square both sides, you're going to get a weird term in the middle that's still going to contain a square root, and that's just going to make problems even harder for us. So, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, minus 1 on both sides. We're going to move this one so we can get the square root by itself, right? So we get square root of x minus 1 is equal to x minus 1. Right. So notice that we have the same thing over here and I know a lot of people like using uh, something called the K method which I, I do actually like the K method but uh, it can get a bit hard at times. So I'm just going to do it quickly on the side here. If you... Um, so I, I said, okay, let, uh, let k, let's see, my one, k equal to x minus 1, right? And then if we substitute this in, we're going to get square root of k equals to k, right? So we're just uh, replacing that. And then we can then square both sides. So we left with k, because that uh, square cancels with that. So we left with k equals k squared. What we do, we take this k over, so we live with 0 equals to k squared minus k. Uh, we take out a common factor of k, uh, which equals to k into k minus 1. Uh, and from here, we can, uh, this is the same as our first problem, remember, over here. The same thing over there, but instead of a 1, a 7, we have a 1, and instead of a x, we have a k. So from here, we can either write them out separately in your two cases or you can pop the, the our original thing back in uh, I'm gonna do it that way so I'm gonna have 0 equals to x minus 1 and then again that's what this k is this x minus 1 is from that k and this k here we have x minus 1 and then our, our 1 from there right so let's not uh, get too complicated and now we break it up so we're gonna have x minus 1 equals to 0. Uh, we can just finish this one. We can move uh, x over or add, x, add 1 on both sides. So we live with x equals to 1. Uh, in our second case, well, we have minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2 equals to 0. And then we take the 2 over, so we live with x equals to 2. All right. This is one way of doing it. This is using the k method. Um, uh, it makes things a bit easier by substituting and then, you know, it becomes less work and stuff, which is nice. But remember, you're going to have to put it back in. So that will give you five marks if you, if you do it that way. Another way that people like doing um, would be from this step just to uh, square both sides from here, which is doing this step right here without the K. So we're going to uh, we just square this um, both sides. I'm going to do it this way as well. So this becomes squared equals to x 
minus one and we're going to square that as well let's see and if we square this this uh, square root cancels so we're left with x minus one equals two uh this is just going to be expanding and then multiplying it out or you can just write it in it becomes x multiplied by itself which is x squared uh, the middle term you can obtain by x multiplied by 1, minus 1, multiplied by 2, which is going to give us minus 2x. And then minus 1 multiplied by itself, which is going to give us plus 1. Right. And then what we're going to do, we're going to move the x and the minus 1 over. So we can get a nice 0 on the side. We like having zeros. And we add like terms. There's no other um, x squared, so we know that stays there. We have minus uh, 2x, and then this x comes over, it becomes negative as well, so that becomes negative 3x. I was just simply adding. Uh, this minus 1 comes over, it becomes plus 1, 1 plus 1, 2. It's like the first question they ask you ever. It's 1 plus 1. And then over here, you're just going to be factorizing a bit. So that's 0. Uh, easy factorizing. Uh, this becomes x, x. We see this term over here, it's 2. Um, what numbers multiplied by each other gives us 2? 1 and 2. And notice if we, uh, so we can just write that in, because that's the only numbers really. So 2 and 1, 2 and 1. And then uh, notice we have a plus sign here and a neg sign here, negative sign. So uh, we have 2, 1. And notice we should add them together, because 2 plus 1 is 3. And this sign here is negative. So both of them should be negative. And when we multiply them together, if you want to work your back to check your answer, and then minus 2 multiplied by minus 1 gives us 2 again, which is correct. And then once again, same case, uh, we have two numbers multiply each other. That gives us 0. Which, yeah, that's a 0. What we want, so we have our two cases where x minus 2 is equal to 0 or x minus 1 equals to 0 and hey look at that we move them over so x equals to 2 or x equals to 1 which is exactly the same answer we get for when we uh, use the k method or just normal working with a bit more terms and stuff right oh that that will give you five marks in exam you could choose any method um yeah i i yeah, the methods. K method is kind of nice. Look at this. Uh, less terms needed. Uh, pretty much the same number of steps, really, because you're just re um, adding what you really took out again. Anyway, I don't. Uh, last question for today is this one over here. Now, uh, x three to the power of x plus three minus three to the power of x plus two equals to four hundred and eighty-six. So little reminder, be sure to um, pause the video uh, and give it a go. Uh, be sure to practice. Right, so, uh, I'll, hopefully you got it right. Uh, if you didn't, it's fine. <laughs> Get it right in the exam. Don't quote me on that. Right, now. so, um, the, this is a problem where we have our x that we're trying to solve uh, in our exponent now. It's not, it's not in our base, like in our previous examples, we had um, x, uh, x to the squared, you know, x, x to the squared, x squared. Um, so this is going to be a bit different, but it's four marks, so nice, easy four marks. So the first thing we want to deal with is this 486 number. Uh, it's, it's not really, you know, nice looking compared to other numbers like 3 to the x plus 3. That looks, that looks pretty nice, but this... 486, uh -uh. okay, so we're going to type in our calculator, press equal, and we're going to shift fact on your Casio, if you have a Casio, you should actually have a Casio, it's like a requirement, and if you um, type that in and then press shift and fact, you're gonna, your calculator is going to give you 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 5, which is really good, because we are working with numbers that are, have base 3, and since we have that base 3, this really good uh, and then on our left side um, what we should be doing is we're going to be taking out a common factor so um, our common factor in this case is going to be 3 to the power x plus 2 right um, yeah if you if you're not really sure on how to take out a common factor with exponents um, it's not really that odd because we know that 
um, 3 um, multiplied by 3 squared because remember this 3 over here has a 1 so we add the exponents that's like the rules of exponents which is just 1 plus 2 which is just uh, 3 to 3 so uh, when we separate in them if you want to move your way back now we see that like in this case if this was an x here we would be just separating them as 3 to the 1 times 3 to the 2 hope that helped sound a bit weird so what we're going to be left with is just 3 right because if we multiply this back together you see we have 3 to the x plus 2 multiplied by 3 hope that 3 is to the 1 so we're left with 3 to the x plus 2 plus 1 which is what we started with which is good so that is what we started with so we live with 3 um, this is the same term over here so we're just gonna be left with minus 1 and then 3 minus 1 is 2 which is great because then that's gonna cancel with that 2 so we live with 3 x plus 2 times 2 is equal to 2 multiplied by 3 to the 5 and then we divide both sides by 2 get rid of these 2's so that one cancels with that one that one cancels with that one and we are left with 3 to the x plus 2 is equal to 3 to the 5 right um, and this is this is exactly where we want to be going because notice we have one term on our left one term on our right and it's and this this statement here is saying that what's on on our left side is equal to our right side right that's what um solve for x has always been so what we're going to do uh, since they have the same base we can drop our bases and we're going to be left with x plus 2 is equal to 5 right and that look at that look how easy is that we're just going to minus 2 on both sides we are left with x equals to 5 minus 2 is 3 well done easy easy stuff that will give you four marks congratulations and that is all for today's video thanks for watching guys i hope that really that helped you um if you have any more questions be sure to drop them in the comments and if there is a question in the comments that you know be sure to help help the person that posted the comment um once again thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one bye